guys, it's John in Brooklyn, back at Casey Farms again, and you know what time it is. You saw this getting put up. We did a video on our brooder box, which we stole from Lumna Acres. If you haven't seen that, check out his page. The easiest brooder box to set up, and we store them. We've got two of them. We store them right here next to the feeders. The only negative that I would say about this brooder box is the dust and the stink in the garage. So if I had a perfect world, I would just uh, make an outdoor brooder box and then you don't have to smell it. But on that hand, it's more about the dust than the smell because we clean it out. And I feel if we had one outside, we'd probably neglect it a little bit because you're not out there every day. So this helps us keep it clean. We've got the water with the apple cider vinegar in it. We've got a little feeder there. Jamie will be excited. She bought this a while back and we've never used it yet, but it's perfect for what we have now. We did not order any chicks, but if you remember in the last couple videos, um, we lost a lot of our... Wellsomers. Wellsomers, yes, we lost Big Red. So we grabbed every brown egg we had and we threw them into an incubator because we want to replenish our flock. We've probably only got about eight or nine Wellsomer chickens left. The other two are the speckled Sussex, and there are some of those eggs in here, but they have started hatching. So we've got, oh, how many we got in there? One, two, three, we got six hatching, hatched. We've got one hatch in there and a couple. Oh good, the brown ones are starting to peck out. We haven't seen any action on some of the brown ones. They're starting to peck out. So we're gonna grab these. you can't actually tell when they're very little because they're, and that one that's on the legs are only a little bit dark. Yeah. But when they start getting a little bit older, their legs will get yeah. dark. So go ahead and grab those, Brooke, and let's start putting them over. Come Guys, on. always remember, dip your chick's beaks in the water. And then they figure out the rest from there. Are you going to grab two or three? Two. All right. I don't want to drop them. Let's get those back. Always exciting to have new life, especially when you hatch them out yourself. It's just 21 days and you have new chicks. Make sure you dip them in there. That way they know where the water is. And we've read chicks can last 48 hours. That's why they're able to ship them without eating or drinking because they survive on the yolk sac that's in the eggs. Okay, let's go get the other ones. So yesterday we butchered 20 of our meat birds. We've got over 115 pounds. Oh, let's get these other ones. 115 pounds of meat out of those the other day. So we've had quite a busy time here on the farm. Chickens hatching, other chickens going into the freezer. It's been busy and exciting. So. Always exciting when you have me. Yep. So that's one of the reasons we want to get another rooster so we can keep hatching our own eggs. Beak. You got it. So we've just got six so far. We got four in almost. Yeah, this one right here looks a little different, doesn't it? Which one? A dark one right there. Uh huh, that might be an American. Yeah. Could and be it American. had darker legs. Could be a Sussex mix. Because if you remember, we got the two speckled Sussex in there with the Wellsmers. It could be a mix. So we've kind of got a smorgasbord of what possibly could be hatching out. So let's get the last two, give these other ones some room to finish hatching out. There we go. And you, if when they're um, you'll have to start checking for pasty when they're young. What's pasty? But Tell them what pasty, pasty is. Pasty butt. It's when the poop gets crested around their vents. Yep. And they can't poop, so you gotta take a wet cloth and dip and like rub it gently, and it will sometimes come off. Yep. That one pecking at you? It's trying to get out of my hand. All right. Last thing, we didn't turn the heat lamp on yet. Go ahead and plug in that heat lamp. 
pitcher's not as good when the heat lamp's on, so I didn't want to put it on, but we'll keep them nice and warm. It's warm out today, so awesome. Six new birds. We got more pecking out. So why don't we, uh, let's grab, since we talked about butchering chicks, chickens, not chicks. Yeah, you uh, don't want to butcher chicks. Yeah. Get half of, like, tiny little. Get a chicken nugget? Yeah. Grab one of those and let's show them. Which one? Just grab one, it don't matter. All right, so here we go. There's one of our birds. We've got our labels on there, 6.19 pounds. And we're selling three dollars a pound so it's just it's just amazing especially in the day and time we live in where the grocery stores are going nuts and people are buying everything out and they're not able to get stuff in and that sometimes chickens are so small that it could from the store like, yeah and they're expensive too. yeah so there we are we've got no antibiotics non-gmo feed uh chickens from Some valley farms are bigger than others yeah, we got anywhere from five to, I think we got up to seven pounds this time. We butchered him right at eight weeks this time. So let's go ahead and get him so back in the freezer. didn't get any clothes. Didn't like, get any monsters. Yeah. But we like the smaller ones because they fit in our rotisserie better. Yeah, so. because it says that it will hold a whole turkey, but it can't even hold our chickens. Yeah. It's false advertising. All right, so there's the chicks. There's the chickens we butchered. I think I talked to you guys about this last time on this uh, incubator. I just want to show you. Be careful on some of these incubators. Um, you'll see we have paper towels and socks stuffed down in the side right there. That's because the chickens have fallen down in there. And so one has drowned. Yeah, we had one drown. We had one die because they fall down in those things. So we stuffed socks and paper towels in there so they don't fall down. Let me get that one shut time up. we had to rescue one. Yeah, let me get that shut up so the humidity stays up for them. Uh, last thing we want to do today, um, we introduced Rosie to the piglets. If you've seen last video, if you hadn't, check it out. Um, so let's go check and see how they're getting along with each other back at the pig barn. Let's go. guys here's the piglets and there's rosie and rosie of course the big one rosie yeah starburst and hershey and back there's jimmy jimmy's hanging out back there and rosie you can see rosie's still uh showing them who's boss but they've got plenty of room to get away and they are a lot faster than her too so and we have to dodge rosie's turds now too. <laughs> Yeah, for all these big turds. So, everyone's getting along well. Well, maybe if you ask the piglets, they might not feel that way, but. So we just wanted to show you that. We kept them next to each other for two days. Hey, Jimmy. And uh, we spread out the food a little bit. We put roses in a bowl. The piglets are used to eating off the ground. So we, uh, <laughs> A lot of times, um, Rosie will go to the ground and they'll go into the bowl. Yeah. So we spread it out so they have plenty of time to get food before she comes and bullies them out of their food. I can't get you guys on film if you're at my ankles. So it definitely works out better. We've done it where we've just thrown in smaller pigs with bigger pigs. And even if they're the same size, they still argue to figure out who's boss. So, but it definitely works better sharing the fence. In our Girls are more feisty than women. That's like real life, isn't it? Uh, no. I think so. So, there we go. There's Rosie and the three amigos, Jimmy, Hershey, and Starburst. And they're going this weekend to their new homes. So we're excited for them. Dara McPherson. Yep, McPherson Family Farms. So Rosie getting a good scratch. Guys, we forgot one thing we want to show you. Um, we've got some volunteer plants coming up. We've always seen, I've seen other YouTube videos where they have volunteer things grow. And so we were adding to our compost pile and we've got some volunteer plants coming up. So we want to show you how massive they're getting. Let's run up here before we leave and check these out. Here is our compost pile. 
you can see i'm assuming this is a type of squash Thought that was something. And our we've got one corn stalk. We haven't been able to grow corn in the garden, but we've got a massive corn stalk. Obviously, we'll get nothing off of that, but it's just kind of cool. And look at the size of this squash. We won't get anything off of it because it can't cross pollinate because there's no other corn stalk. There you go. Um, these find me bushes a, right here. Find me a squash in there somewhere. There's something out here. There's one. We don't know for sure if it's squash. Yeah, we think so. Yeah, but we think so. So, so it's just massive. Here's a big one in here. Compared to the ones we're getting in our garden, this thing is just huge. So we were pretty excited about this. And a lot of our stuff just goes to the pigs. So this may end up going to the pigs or we'll use it. Jamie makes a mean zucchini bread. So we always enjoy that. But just wanted to show you that. Something new that we've never had on the farm yet like the pig ate something and then the poop went in the pile and then the seed grew could be could be it would always be fun to figure out where that seed come and follow that journey all the way here into our compost pile see how it happened but well guys thank you for watching if you haven't already make sure you like subscribe and check us out on instagram and also facebook all right we'll see you on the next video